beginning to look like what was called Bay Point in the old days, but um, I guess it was Port Chicago was another name that stuck, but uh, you can't even get there now. It's all part of the Army, ba the Army base, and they won't let you there. Sacramento Northern shared a station with the Santa Fe here, and there were three railroads in parallel at one time. You could race a steam train in the days of the passenger trains. We're going through the slot. It's full of water today. Tracks are still there, though. But it's below sea level, where we went under the Santa Fe first, and then the uh, Southern Pacific, now Union Pacific, and Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Headed to West Pittsburgh, siding there where you could leave some extra freight trains, extra freight cars. and Locomotives generally didn't cross on the ferry boat. They just put the freight cars on in the freight train days and picked them up with different locomotives on the other side. But today I'm going to go all the way to Sacramento. We're going to dump off the freight train here and put it on the Ramon when he shows up. He's not there yet. He's probably bringing some cars over. Maybe we're going up with the locomotive to pick him up. Anyway, you can see the three tracks on the Ramon set up so if you use the center one, you can't use the two outside ones. And if you use one outside one, you better use the other or you'll tip the Ramon over. The Ramon's there now. And are we going to go aboard? I guess we're going to go over and pick up something on the other side. This may have been a rail friend excursion, and he probably didn't let us go across on the Ramon unless we're going to use the center track. I can't remember. It was in the 1940s. They must have let us go across. Here we're coming into Ship's Island. Part of that superstructure is still there. It was out there the other day with the with Jay Dalala and saw that big overhead there in the center that we're looking at right now. People came in all directions to see us. We must be using the 1005 or the MW302 X1020 Spoonbill. We're headed off up the Delta. I think Drawbridge is up here somewhere. Have we missed Drawbridge? I think, no, we're coming to Drawbridge next. Slow. Uh, the fills were always settling away from the trestle. They had to dump a lot of sand in, keep the railroad working. Honker. There's Drawbridge ahead. It's amazing. There was quite a lot on Chips Island. A station called Dutton was also called Drawbridge. We're going across the Drawbridge. It's a big swing bridge that swang, uh, swang over, uh, or swung you could swing it over onto the levee and you could uh, get a boat through but the it was a the bridge was longer than necessary so it could swing both ways here's Molina we're going to extend our tracks down there look at that we've got an old member of the school train sitting there for maintenance of the way when I went down by Molina in the probably the late 40s or early 50s Molina now this track we still have, but we, we have now, but we haven't put the wire up this far yet. And from the looks of the headlight, I'm riding in either the 603 or the 604. Here's uh, Rio Vista Junction, where we keep most of our equipment at the uh, railway museum, going under the old uh, Highway 12 bridge. Look what we got here. The switches are still here. Their poles go off to the right. This is the junction at Clyde where they used to have a big Y, and they went off to Vacaville and Fairfield. It was uh, stopped, use of it was stopped. You can see the right away and even the rails going off to the left there, but they don't use it anymore because it runs right into the runway at Travis Air Force Base. Used to go over there on a 1500 volt third rail so that it, uh, the wires wouldn't interfere with the airplanes. And then they had to coast across the runway itself. Here's the Dozier substation. It ran all the time, and the stations at the end of the line detected trains entering the line and turned on. Sighting there, Dozier sign. There's lots of equipment for working on the wire. There's the new tracks going off to, uh, oh, I forget the name of the place, but that track is still there where we can get equipment from the, um, the uh, Union Pacific. Here's a, another station up in the agricultural region. Looks like Vail. Sign. Lots of little tra stations. Look at that one. <laughs> Lib Farm. Here's my favorite station, though. Yolano, right on the county lane. Solano, Yolano County there. Now we're turning to the right. We're going to head off across the Lisbon Trestle. 
Saxon. I haven't been to Saxon in a long time, but if I want to go see the, what's left of the Lisbon Trestle, this is the place to do it. I think you can get there by car. We're heading on to the Lisbon Trestle. Big curve. Now we're on the trestle. It's had a speed restriction at the time. This is the one that fell down at about this point. I believe it's been... Were these taken? I can't... Here's the substation at the northern end of the Oakland Antioch. It's a Lisbon. It had, I believe, 2,000 horsepower. At any rate, we're just coming off the Lisbon trestle. The station would turn on as soon as the train came in from, the, from Sacramento. Now we're headed to cross some beautiful curved trestles just before we get to Sacramento. For a while they used these tracks for storing some of the bad order cars on the Western Pacific. I don't know if the trestles are still there. Here's the branch on the right there. It takes off, it's called the Holland Branch, goes down to the sugar, beach sugar beet factory down along the river. Now we've got some fairly high-speed track on into Sacramento. River view, we're right next to the river here. Pretty soon we'll come to places where they no longer have 1,500 volts of electricity, only 600. So if we've got two locomotives, we can't have both pantographs up. <laughs> It'd be a bit of a shocking ex experience. There's the sign, 600 volts. Yeah, now somewhere there should be a big insulator up there in the wire. Didn't see it. Westgate, this is where another place where they used to store passenger cars. Uh, Broderick, this is where we crossed the uh, Southern Pacific. And also this particular place is where our branch, the branch to Woodland took off from the Sacramento Northern. And then we go right straight across the M Street Bridge, right down the middle of it. Hard to believe that cars and how many lanes of cars were there? Two on each side? Cars must have been narrower in those days. Still only four lanes, but there's no track in the center. Judging from the pictures, it's about 1947. The cars to give it away. Well, the track used to go straight to the Capitol here and then up to 16th Street. And there were passenger trains. Now it turns south and goes down to X Street and a bunch of freight yards. There's our bell ring like mad to make sure we make it around the corner. We're turning right by where the delta lines and river lines used to come. Here's the same thing from the outside. This is, looks like 40th and Shafter. And here's the MW302, which um, no longer has motors in it. We've rebuilt it as Oakland, Antioch, and Eastern 1020, which was its original... original paint job actually. It's back to its original paint job now. You can see why there were problems on Shafter Avenue. There's barely room for cars and a train. Well, they got one car, MW320, but you know if that car is not parked right, the train won't barely, will barely make it by there. It did. College and Shafter, I recognize the corner here. This is where I used to hop on the train to get home from junior high. George Hayman would be kind enough to stop there for the streetcar tracks that cross like the streetcars went there by then. Now we're headed up through Rockridge, near the Rockridge Yards. Probably in full series parallel, but it's a steep grade. Looks like this picture is taken from the present freeway to going to the tunnel. I vaguely remember that upper part of Rockridge there, and then the the train actually went under the early part of the freeway there. Let's see if that's where we are. Yeah, the train's going to go under me. Now it comes out the other side and should go by Lake Temescal. I believe. Where was I? I don't remember all those cuts there. Well, we're past Lake Temescal now. Could be George going up to work on the tunnel rather than excursion. The lights are on. That looks like uh, like 
Oh gosh. That's coming over under the freeway. I may have taken some of the earlier pictures there. I think that's George going up to work on the on the tunnel on the tunnel crew. There he's going by like Temescal. Pictures weren't quite in their order there, but they're close. Like Temescal's on the right, the old freeway is on the left. <laughs> You'd hardly recommend that. Actually that's the old Mountain View Freeway. Here's another shot of the same area, and it looks like the same train, so it must be on a different day. So George was busy in those days. He came up every night after the last freight train had done. Uh, had, uh, there's my old LaSalle again. How about that? The last freight train comes down to Shafter, then George takes off in the MW302 uh, or earlier in the 601. And some of those other pictures were taken from the 601, where these are taken of the MW302 going up to work on the tunnel, which usually turned out to be a yearly affair. He's still just beyond Lake Temescal, between Lake Temescal and uh, Montclair. Fairly well separated from the roads there. But that right away all still exists, would make a great rails to trail. Getting ready to come by Thornhill, I think. Not far from Thornhill, anyway. Thornhill's just beyond where the MW302 is now. The Montclair Highlands is on the left. Uh, I think I'm just beyond Thornhill in back of the fire station. I got some pictures there. Climbed up on the high point. Montclair School should be on the right down here. There's part of it. I was more interested in the train, obviously. There's the crossing just beyond Montclair School. That was laid out for double track, by the way, with WPA money, thinking they might really expand the railroad back in 1939. Here's coming out of Eastport. Looks like the same train. Surprised I got over there while it was still light. There are lots of people on board. It's a rail fan excursion. Now we're in Canyon. Must be a rail fan excursion, because normally it was pretty dark by the time the tunnel crew got up to the tunnel. Again, they're using the MW302, though, which was made available for rail fan excursions.